It is a rough road that leads to the heights of greatness. Lucius Aeneas Seneca. <clears throat> so, this is your favorite aspiring revolutionary here, and I still feel a little sick, but I am improving, thankfully. As always, um, my message remains the same. Spend less, live more, earn your freedom with frugality. <clears throat> and today we're going to resume our discussion of Stoic philosophy, which we started because of its applications in modern consumer society. So, so far we've gone over four principles, and today we're going to talk about a fifth and a sixth one. So the first principle that we went over was focus on the controllables. Just no matter how hard you try, you can't make somebody like you, for example. So don't waste energy on stuff that is outside of your control because it's a waste of time, effort, and frustration. <clears throat> Next, we went over um, to live a life of action, Stoic philosophy. The Stoics in general, both Roman and Greek, emphasized that you, once you've figured out the stuff that is under your control, then you need to pour energy into those things, the ones that you can influence. Then, of course, be virtuous. That right there is what a huge part. Ultimately, Stoicism is a eudaimonistic virtue philosophy. It's about the value of living virtuously and how that's truly the only good way to life to live. Virtue outweighs pleasure, um, which is very countercurrent to consumer culture. Pleasure dominates in our times. <laughs> Next is a lead by example. It's the fourth principle we talked about last time. Whenever we tell people what to do, we make them frustrated. But whenever we show them, we activate their mirror neurons. <laughs> Anyways, and then today we're going to start off with a fifth principle, which is subdue the ego, starve it. Here's a good quote to start us off. Progress is not achieved by luck or accident, but by working on yourself daily. Epictetus, crippled former Greek slave and stoic genius. Now, <clears throat> Ryan Holiday, uh, he is a contemporary, like he's from the modern world, but he's also an expert on stoicism, defined the ego as an unhealthy belief in your own importance. It's the petulant child that's inside everybody that chooses getting their own way over everything else. The need to be better than, more than, recognized for, something far past any reasonable utility, the sense of superiority that exceeds the bounds of confidence and talent. Ryan Holiday. <clears throat> Unfortunately, our culture promotes ego. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine, the lyrical genius T. Rizzle, and I mentioned that there is a strong tendency to aggrandize the self in our culture. Arrogance, stubbornness, and recklessness are all rooted in overinflated egos, and none of these correlate positively with long-term success, life satisfaction, or stability. <clears throat> Why does letting a distorted view of your own abilities and significance interfere with mastering your craft, generating creative insight, and inspiring loyalty? I don't know. But it's pretty clear that it damages just about every aspect of your daily life, that is, to let the ego dominate your world. <clears throat> How is the ego diminished, though? Well, you got to start by refusing to do its bidding. If you feel lazy, work anyways. If you're hungry, don't eat. Don't nourish your ego. Star starve it. Once you learn how to recognize the thoughts, desires, and impulses that are fed by your ego, it becomes a lot easier to ignore them. Or, in other words, hashtag comfort restrains you. Quit relying on social support to build self-esteem and cultivate it independently. Don't focus on others, focus on yourself. Persistent work towards a goal without seeking recognition will also dampen your ego's power. Ryan's Holiday, Ryan Holiday advised us to strive in obscurity in his book, Ego is the Enemy. Another way to phrase that would be to say, there, you need to be working on your craft, whatever that may be, whether it's creating content, playing an instrument, being a parent, and you don't need to do it for the desire for recognition. You just need to do it because that's your purpose. If you eventually obtain accolades, fame, and notoriety, that's great. But 
the work needs to be getting done either way. <laughs> and then our next principle is um, to eliminate entitlement. So even if we've controlled all the controllables, we're taking purposeful action daily and filling our time, almost every second of it, with importance and significance in the truest sense, there is no guarantee that what we're doing will be successful. And that's true of myself now with the projects that I'm working on and human and humanity as, as a larger uh, whole. Having an end in mind is no guarantee that you'll reach it. Marcus Aurelius emphasizes that because a thing seems difficult for you, do not think it impossible for anyone to accomplish, though. So, again, don't be entitled to anything at all, ever. <clears throat> but realize that it is within any man's capabilities, if he fully devotes himself towards a task, to realize it. Epictetus also cautions that wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. Diligence is required to manifest greatness, but it's insufficient alone. Athletes train tirelessly, but there is only one gold medal given out at the end of the Olympics. Now, if we look at both of these principles, there's a clear pattern that emerges from these, and it's the encouragement of humility. And if we look at the most famous Stoics' lives, there's a humbling pattern that emerges. Seneca experimented with poverty, despite being one of Rome's wealthiest citizens. And Cato would dress like a pauper, even though he was also a senate from the senatorial class. It's a lot different than what we see nowadays, ain't it? <laughs> we, we had the people of wealth and power willingly putting themselves into inferior positions just to humble themselves so that way pride wasn't taking over their lives. And the reason why that is is because humility kills pride. Another powerful tool we can use to combat arrogant and ego-driven lives is gratitude. The ego is never satisfied, always wants more, and never says thank you. So, you need to do it instead. <laughs> Imbuing your life with graciousness necessarily expels a prideful attitude. You cannot be prideful and haughty if you're thankful for everything. And then here is another quote from Seneca and uh, one from Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius to close us out for today. So Seneca says, It is not the man who has little, but the man who craves more that is poor. And Epictetus says, don't explain your philosophy, embody it. And finally, Marcus Aurelius, waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be, be one. Um, yeah, so, again, speaking and waxing philosophy is vastly important, but ultimately, actually doing what you want with your life is the most important. So, um, don't be entitled to anything. Subdue your ego and work tirelessly without screaming for attention. Um, those are all good principles, for sure. And they're, they are ones that are not uh, encouraged by modern consumer culture at all <laughs> but i definitely think that it's something that we can all benefit from a little bit right so that's really all i have for you as far as stoic thought today i really haven't been walking around a lot lately because i still feel quite sick um i am starting to get a lot better the my upper back is still hurt is hurting way more than, than it should but i am getting a lot more paid work done lately doing my writing. I wrote an article for RV Trader today about um, Collierville, Tennessee. So if you're ever in or around Memphis, you can check out that on their website. It doesn't have my name attached though, unfortunately. Uh, as always, this is your favorite aspiring revolutionary here, a wandering author, reminding you that we are all the authors of our own lives. 
My message remains the same, spend less, live more, earn your freedom with frugality. Tomorrow we should have a whiteboard arriving, so we'll be able to upload some of our trip planning finally as we uh, actually move into the planning phase on that. I've got some more paid writing to get done today. Um, I need to try and take advantage of the time I have right now before we start our expedition up to Maine so that we can focus mainly on creating content while we're traveling instead of having to spend every single second working. Um, I am staying incredibly busy, unfortunately, uh, but working hard is good for the soul, so I can't really complain too much. Um, hopefully, you guys have gotten some value from this. If you support the message and you like the intent, I would strongly uh, request that you guys like, share, and subscribe if you're not already. That's um, really that's what I'm doing this stuff for. I want to do it for you guys, and that's how you can show me your support. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope that y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. And let me ask y'all, what are you doing to inspire, uplift, and empower your community today? Because this world isn't changing unless we all do our part. And you can count on me to do mine daily. Until next time, I love y'all.